Blends are one of the most powerful features of Looker Studio. They're a little tricky to get your head around, so we're going to talk about some of the gotchas with blends that you'll likely run into and the different types of blends that you can create in Looker Studio. What we're looking at here is a great example of uh, a visualization that I created with a blend where I uh, am reporting on the number of keywords that are ranking over time for different ranking position ranges. So to be able to give an idea of how a website, like the its kind of presence in organic search over time. Something that I created with a blend, I'll include a link to a video that goes through how to create this one specifically. I just want to share that because it's super cool. We're going to talk more about just the basics of blends. We're going to be looking at these data sources I created and we're going to talk about um, left outer joins and blends. We're going to talk about inner joins and blends and full outer joins and blends and a few of the gotchas um, with uh, creating those, those uh, blend types. So let's get started. The first thing I did is to create some sample data in a sheet. I just changed the color of the text on the left table for the fruit types that are not on the right table and color coded the uh, fruits on the right table that are not on the left table. That's just to make it a little easier to see which fruits are in common between both sides. Then in Looker Studio, this is kind of a fun trick. If you want to create a data source from a Google Sheet, you can add the Google Sheet data source type. Here's my sample blend data. Here's my sample data. Then one of your options is to include a specific range. So what you can do is like this first data set is A1 through B7. So I can just say A1, B7. And there we go. And I already added this data source, but that's how you do that part of it. Then a little sneaky trick I did here is I added some conditional formatting and just set up a rule that uh, if it was one of these fruit types, apples, bananas, or blueberries, then change the text to red. So that's how I did that sneaky little trick. I do recommend that you try out some of your own sample data. The benefit of connecting to a range, you know, you could easily have this data on two different sheets. It's just kind of nice to be able to look at it right next to each other when we're trying to understand how blends work. So let's have a look at how left outer and right outer joins work. We're going to start by creating a blend. I could do it by going up here to resource manage blends, but the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to pick this table and then I'm going to select this table and I'm going to right click and we have this blend data option. I think that's the easiest way to create a blend, but you can also go up to the resource menu. It's defaulted to quantity weirdly as the dimension, so I'm going to change that to fruit. And then I'm going to add quantity as a metric. Okay, now we'll have a look at this data in a second, but let's just look at the configuration of the blend. So I can do that by clicking this pencil icon next to the blend. And we've got the data we set up on the left and the data we set up on the right. So the thing we want to pay attention to is this one condition here. Condition here refers to the join condition. And a join condition is a term that comes from SQL and describes when you're combining two tables of data, how you want the data to be combined. This UI shows the different ways that we can combine that data in a Looker Studio blend. So it's defaulted to left outer, and Google describes that as returns matching rows from the right table plus non-matching rows from the left table. So what does that mean? Well, that means that in a left join, it's going to return matching and non-matching rows from the left table. What that means really is it's going to return all rows from the left table and only matching rows from the right table. 
A right outer join is exactly the same thing, but if we look at that, it says returns matching rows from the left table plus non-matching rows from the right table. So it's the inverse of what a left outer join does. So we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about right outer joins. They function exactly the same. It's just they return all rows from the right table. This is what a join is, and we're going to talk about inner joins, full outer joins. Right now, let's have a look at the data in the left outer join. Close this. So we have the left table over here, and we have oranges, grapefruit, cherries. And then we have blueberries, bananas, and apples that are only in the left table. So what it's done is it got quantity for all of them because there's values for quantity in the left table, but it only got quality for the rows that matched in the right table. And then it just returned null values for rows in the left table that don't have a corresponding value in the right table. That's what a left outer join does, is it gives you everything from the left table and only matching values from the right table. Now, let's play around with this data a little bit. Right now, I conveniently have one value for each fruit type. Right now, we don't have to deal with situations where there might be two rows of the same data or two rows of the same fruit. So let's change that. I'm going to add another row for cherries here, and then I'll add another row for grapefruit here. So then we'll go back to our table and I'm going to refresh the data. Okay, so now what did it do? So it took cherries and it did what we kind of want it to do, which is it doubled the quantity. In the case of grapefruit, it doubled the quality. Well, that's not actually what we want there. So what we can do with the on the right table is you'll see here that the metric defaulted to sum, so we can change that to an average and save that. Close and refresh data. So then you can see in this table on the right, so for grapefruit, we've got a quality value of three, so it did average that value, and for cherries, we've got our value of 10. So sometimes you'll have to just pay attention to how it's aggregating values in your blend to make sure you get the value that you want. One other circumstance I want to look at is when you have more than one dimension in either your left or your right table. So I created another sample data set here. And this one, I added a column for color and I created data sources that connect to each of these. And that's what we're looking at in on this tab. So here I've pulled in the color common column. You'll see here we do have a color column, but for right now I want to leave it off to just show you something. Now if I create a blend from these two, and I'm going to reorganize the dimensions here. So I'm going to add color. So let's let's have a look at this. I'm going to add my quantity column. So now, what have we got going on here? If we look at our source data, at, in this case, we have yellow and orange grapefruit, uh, quantities of five. Then we have yellow and red cherries. Over here, we only have yellow grapefruit with a quality of three. Then we have yellow cherries with a quality of three and red cherries with a quality of five. So let's look at what we got here. So our red cherries have a quality of four and our yellow cherries also have a quality of four and our grapefruit has a quality of three. So that's what we would expect there because there's only one value in the right table. So what's going on? So let's have a look at the blend in this one. So what happened is because in the right table I didn't have color, it created a blend and joined on fruit. Now I've set up the vent blends kind of conveniently here. The column names match in both data sets and stuff. So it is generally picking the right field to join the two tables on. But because I didn't have 
color in the right table, it didn't select it as a dimension. So what I need to do here is I need to add color as a dimension here. And then I need to go up to my join condition and I need to add that as a join field. And this is such a common gotcha that you're working in a circumstance where you've got dimensions on your left, dimensions on your right, and your number, like your metrics aren't aggregating the way that you want them to. And it is often because you need to have the dimensions that make a row unique in both tables that you're blending together and then make sure that those dimensions are in the blend. Now let's talk a little about inner joins. This is the left join blend that we created before from the data without the color column. So I want to show you what happened. So, so as a left outer join right now, this is the one we created before, because blueberries, bananas, and apples don't exist in the right side data, we're getting null values here. So let's see what happens when we change this to a, an inner join. And Google describes this as returns only matching rows from the left and right table. So let's see what happens here. So here we go. So all it's showing us now are the rows that exist, the fruit values that exist in both tables. Otherwise, pretty similar, the gotchas I described, if you have multiple dimension columns that really define uniqueness for a row of data, you need to make sure to include them in your join condition, exactly the way you would with a left blend. Really, I think the main purpose for an inner join, at least when I run into it, like why I would choose an inner join versus a left outer, is cases where I only want to see data when I have values in both tables. I'm only interested in circumstances where I know both the quantity and the quality of a given fruit. The last join I'd like to talk about is the full outer join. We'll take this blend here and we're going to switch it to full outer. So if we click on full outer here, returns all rows from the left tables and right tables, whether they match or not. So this one, you're going to see something interesting happen. We'll save this, we'll save this. Something curious has happened here. We have these values on the left, the values on the left that aren't on the right, blueberries, bananas, apples got blueberries, bananas, apples. Then what happened to limes, lemons, and mangoes? Weirdly, we have these quality values. And if you look, we've got limes, five, lemon, four, mango, two. You can see I don't love mangoes. And it sums up to 11. So what gives? Well, if you look over here, this is curious about outer joins, that it's taking the dimension from the left table. So fruit table one, let's go back here and look and see. It's, it's treating these dimensions as two different dimensions, weirdly. So how are we going to deal with this? Um, this one's kind of curious, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a field to solve this problem. And, and what this field is going to do is I'm going to use, I'm just going to call it fruit because the dimensions in the blend are fruit table one and fruit table two. And then I'm going to use a special function called coalesce. And what coalesce is going to do is it's going to, uh, you give it a list of values and it's going to return the first value that is not null. So fruit table two, and I'm going to apply that and now I'm going to get rid of this dimension. So now it's done what I want. So if we look here, our full outer join. So in cases where the fruit exists in both tables, we see there's values for both quantity and quality. The tables that exist on the left and not the right, we get quantity for but not quality and vice versa. The, table, the, the fruits that exist on the right and not the left, we're getting these values for. I also should mention that with blends, I could keep going. So let's say that I have Microsoft, Google, and Facebook data. I could join another table and keep going. I think you have a maximum of five uh, tables that you can join together. 
So, quick run through. The join type I'm not going to talk about is this cross join. We'll just look at that. So, it returns every possible combination of rows from the left and right tables. And honestly, it's just pandemonium. I have never needed to use a cross join in a Looker Studio dashboard. If you come up with a reason why it's useful, I'd love to know. So, please comment. And let's wrap it up. That's it. Uh, we'll, as I mentioned, I'll put a link to this dashboard and the Google Sheet data source in the description so you can copy that and play around with it yourself. When I get a blog post done, I'll include a link to that too, and that'll have some examples of things you can do with blends and links to more detailed examples. If you found this helpful, please click the like button, and thanks so much for watching.